Welcome to Oracle Mobile Cloud Service. MCS has a pretty intuitive user interface, but follow me, Lynn Munsinger, on a quick tour around so you can get a feel for the full MCS development experience. The entry point into MCS is the dashboard, and from there you click on the different areas in the UI depending on what you're doing in MCS. We'll talk more about MCS personas and who does what in a later episode, but it might be one role per person or one person might perform many roles. Regardless of how many people are involved in your mobile development strategy, it's almost impossible to talk about all the different things that MCS does for you without divvying it up by role. Nearly all of our documentation and accompanying collateral take this approach. So here's what you see when you log into the totally modern and pleasant to use MCS user interface. There are four tabs along the top. First, the analytics tab. Now, it would just be the worst if you built a functionally and aesthetically gorgeous mobile app and found out that no one ever used it, right? To avoid a situation like that, drill into the analytics dashboard to see data on built-in events, like how many users are accessing your mobile application, where they're located, and use the slide out menu to change context and see how many calls are being made from the mobile apps to the backend enterprise APIs. Granted, it's eye candy to show your boss how well distributed your mobile users are all over the planet. But what's more interesting is what you do with that data. So use this information to determine which APIs are most useful or who you need to market to, that kind of thing. Then create custom events in this part of the MCS UI to track events depending on what other information you want to see. For example, how many mobile users get through to your shopping cart API but fail to complete the checkout API. Maybe a marketing campaign is needed to spur sales. The sky's the limit when it comes to collecting events. You use the Analytics API built into the MCS Mobile Client SDK to raise these custom events in your mobile app, and that calls the Analytics API, which gathers the data and creates the reports. You'll see them surface here in the Events dropdown. This way, you can determine if you're meeting your success criteria for your mobile applications. You do have your success criteria precisely defined, right? Now, the next tab over is Administration. Mobile cloud administrators use the information here to monitor the health, performance, and life cycle of applications in all of your environments, development, st staging, and particularly production, since that's where you're making money, or at least hopefully adding some value. Here, you can see how the servers are holding up, how they're handling load. You can see if there are any bottlenecks, like um, that would surface as a slow response time or a blockage, which would appear as a status 500 in your service calls. You can drill down into the logs to diagnose issues in real time. You can also version and patch your mobile infrastructure, not just the mobile application, but also the mobile backend and all the dependencies that go along with it the custom code, APIs, and other things that live in MCS, storage and connectors and whatnot. Assuming you have administrator privileges, this is also the place where you define the mobile cloud service team members and give them permissions to do various things in MCS, like create mobile APIs, define roles, view analytics, and deploy mobile backends. Now for the development tab. Here there are six buttons taking stage front and center in the MCS UI. Mobile backends, APIs, connectors, storage, user management, and a tutorial. If you're a mobile developer, you'll click into these areas to develop all the parts you need to create mobile applications. The first step to do mobile development in the cloud is to define a mobile backend. Here you'll assemble together any resources that will be used by your apps, whether your team builds those resources, and therefore they would be considered a custom API, or if they come with MCS itself, that's a platform API. If you're building custom resources, your service development team might not have had the chance to implement all the resources or APIs just yet. So as the mobile developer, you can use the API page to define what the app will need from the custom service and plug in some sample data in the designer view before you hand it off to a service developer who will use the implementations view to develop or upload the JavaScript implementation. 
Now, as is the case with most of these pages in MCS, you can access the API page either from its corresponding button on the home page of MCS or from links within other pages. Refer to the breadcrumbs at the top of a page to determine where you are and where you came from. You'll also see the SDK Downloads link. Here you'll find the libraries for the iOS and Android platforms bundled up for you to use with the corresponding development IDE. The next icon is Connectors. You go here if one of those custom APIs you're developing needs to access an existing resource, maybe from the enterprise, that might need slimming down or sprucing up before its mobile debut. Now there's custom APIs and I also mentioned there's platform APIs as well. These are things that come with Oracle MCS and make your life easier, like APIs to send push notifications to devices, which is a technique that, if done without MCS, is fraught with lots of steps and complexity. MCS also handles storage as a type of platform API. You click this icon in the MCS UI to create collections of things your mobile apps may need – images, text files, or JSON payloads. Then you define which mobile backend, and therefore which mobile applications, can access the storage collection. This then pops up as an available resource for mobile developers to use in the MBE pages of MCS. Finally, user management. Click this to define realms, which is a collection of users controlled by the same authentication policy, roles, and users for those roles and realms, for the mobile applications. Now, earlier I talked about defining roles and privileges in the Administration tab, but that was for the MCS UI itself. Here we're talking about where you manage users for the mobile applications. In each of these areas of the product, the user interface has been designed to be intuitive. In many cases, there are videos or tutorials to guide you through the steps required before you try it out on your own. Of course, you found this resource, the Mobile Platform Channel, and you can click Library if you want to launch product documentation or select Help Center from the user dropdown. You'll likely notice that feedback appears as a vanishing pop-up in the UI as you go about developing resource for mobile applications. One image is on each view. That's the trash. Any artifacts that you have moved to trash via the More menu will appear here, where you can restore an object from the trash at any time. So, now that you understand how the MCS user interface is set up, you can start to see how to use it for your own mobile development efforts. I encourage you to plug into all the resources available for learning about and developing in MCS, especially the episodes here, which dive deeper into each area of the MCS UI. Enjoy.